I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. Mm. Oh, I hated that. <laughs> Has 2022 sucked for gaming? That is a question so big, we've had to make this whole video on it. And it's not even the end of the year yet. Like it hasn't even been my birthday yet. Calm down on your Christmas shopping and go shopping for Tom's birthday instead. So whether this year sucks for gaming really depends on who you talk to and whether they're a glass half full or a glass half empty person. So much of art is subjective and we do get that, but we want to take a more objective approach. Every single time game gets delayed, somebody acts like it's the end of the world. We will get into delays a little bit later in the video, but I guess some people really do just care about one or two specific titles. And look, we get it. We are unbelievably hyped for Tears of the Kingdom. But did this whole year turn to because we didn't get a Zelda title? No. And the same applies the other way. Is this PlayStation's best year ever because we did get God of War Ragnarok? Also no. You know what would make our year the best year ever though? If you hit those like and subscribe buttons. <laughs> no, but seriously, just because you didn't get exactly what you wanted doesn't mean that the whole year sucks and that the whole world should go up in flames. Be disappointed, sure, but there's no need to be such a negative Nancy about it. So let's talk about the cold hard facts. The truth. And the best way to find out if this year was particularly sucky or not is to look at what we did get. So we're pretty positive people. We like to keep a nice happy vibe around these parts. So let's talk about the good news first. <laughs> oh, well, unfortunately, if you own an Xbox, there is no good news for you. Absolutely none. And I'm not even exaggerating. The Xbox has released a whopping grand total of zero AAA exclusives this year. What the hell? So you might be reaching for your keyboard to type out some kind of response like, but next year is going to be great for Xbox. But just stop right there. So Xbox was meant to release both Redfall and Starfield and some Halo stuff this year, but they were delayed until next year. So now there are approximately four games scheduled to be released by Xbox in 2023. And four games from Xbox doesn't seem so bad. Wrong! That was never the plan. There was never supposed to be four games coming out in 2023. There were supposed to be two games coming out in 2022 and another two games coming out in 2023. So I just can't turn that into a win in my brain. Not to mention four releases in a year is pretty average when you're talking about PlayStation or the Switch. So I don't know. Is one kind of average year enough to make up for one super crappy year? I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah, look, I feel like Xbox is just this whole different beast in this console wars thing now, which does kind of make sense. If you're going up against any other corporate beasts, you have to find your own niche in the market. The Switch is obviously very unique with this whole hybrid thing, and it sort of has this like younger target audience, but Xbox and PlayStation have a very similar target market. Yeah, so instead of just butting heads, Xbox has shifted their focus to Game Pass rather than directly competing against PlayStation with exclusive titles. But one of Game Pass's draw cards is that you get all of their exclusive titles on day one. So the fact that there were none this year is pretty disappointing. I'm sorry, I just have to interrupt this broadcast for a second because look how hilarious this Xbox Game Pass ad is. Alejandro the Cactus needs a hug. He lives for the adrenaline fuel thrill of cars drifting past his corner, marveling at their pinpoint precision as they maneuver But if you're more of a phony pony, then you're probably not crying yourself to sleep like those Xbox fanboys over there. Because PlayStation actually had a pretty half decent year when it comes to exclusives. We did get a good handful of really awesome games like Horizon Forbidden West, which I personally loved, Gran Turismo 7, that had problems but it's there, Ghostwire Tokyo, and God of War Ragnarok is of course pretty close. There is definitely enough here to keep you busy. It wasn't PlayStation's best year of all time by any means, but it definitely wasn't a flop. And there are some masterpieces among that lineup of games, like Horizon was really good, and God of War looks awesome. And the only thing better than a good exclusive is an epic exclusive. So yeah, PlayStation gets a yes from us for 2022. It's a thumbs up from me. <laughs> 
But I think you all know what we're going to say next. And if it was, the Nintendo Switch had the best year out of all of them when it comes to exclusives, then, uh, um, what gave it away? <laughs> I mean, we do really love Nintendo, but this is just the truth. Like, facts. But seriously, we're not just saying that because we're biased. We might be a little bit biased, but the facts don't lie. And the Switch had more exclusives by far. I think we did say in our 2022 video that it looked like it was going to be the best year for the Switch this year, and we still stand by that. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, we got two new Pokemon games. When does that ever happen? Well, technically Scarlet and Violet haven't come out yet by the time we're recording this, but they definitely are coming in 2022, and we'll probably have a review up on the channel, so don't forget to subscribe if you want to see that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We also got Xenoblade Chronicles 3, great game, Splatoon 3, great game, a new Kirby game. Oh my god, they're all great games. And I'm not even done yet. We got Triangle Strategy, Switch Sports, and Bayonetta 3, which almost seemed like it was mythical and it was shrouded in a lot of controversy. But here it is, in the flesh, it exists, everybody. So I know we always end up saying this, but it's not our fault. Blame Nintendo for being too awesome. <laughs> or actually blame PlayStation and Xbox for not being as awesome. <laughs> but once again, the facts have spoken and Nintendo had the most exclusives this year. Facts. But it's not just all about the exclusives, is it, Laura? No, it's not. No, it would be extremely unfair if we didn't bring up all the awesome third party and the indie games that released in 2022. Because there were a lot of sick third party games that did release this year. And they also didn't all come out on the Switch. So just so you know, we won't be simping over Nintendo for the rest of the video. We're not just Nintendo simps or Nintendo nerds or whatever the internet wants to call us. The Xbox and PlayStation did both get Elden Ring this year, which won the most highly anticipated game release for like two or three years straight in the Game Awards, so you can't ignore that. And I mean, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. We're not huge on the Call of Duty franchise, but the world doesn't revolve around us and heaps of people froth that game, so PlayStation and Xbox do get some extra points for that one. We do get caught every year though. Ah, it's still good points. Elden Ring's gonna win game of the year though. You Probably. reckon? Yeah. God of War might. Surely. Mm. Guess mm. we'll have to see, won't we? And then there have been plenty of other titles that are coming out or have come out on all platforms, like Sonic Frontiers. Now that hasn't released quite yet, but I did hear about this video on this channel where the two hosts had like a preview of the game and they gave you their thoughts. So, and you could go check that out if you wanted. <coughs> so on years that have been a little more on the slow side in terms of big AAA exclusive games, you can always reach for an indie. For every one AAA exclusive game that comes out, there's probably a hundred or even more indie games that come out. And a lot of them are just as good too. Stray immediately comes to my mind. Honestly, that game really blew the both of us away. And not just because the kitty looks exactly like our little Misa, who's over here. Look, I'll pick him up. He's gonna be angry at me. Come on, buddy. Meow, meow, meow. Say, look, dummy, look. It looks just like, like him. him. It looks cute, look, just like him. Look at the kitty from Stray, everybody. Now I'm covered in cat hair. Anyways, <laughs> we didn't review that one on the channel because Laura actually wrote an article on it. She contributed to the Metacritic score, everybody. How cool is that? Um, so she did a review. We'll leave a link to that in the description below. We didn't have time to make the video as well. But if you haven't played Stray yet and you have the opportunity to do so, we definitely recommend it. And it's also free if you have a PlayStation Network account. So do it, man. We haven't had as much time as we would have liked to to play indies this year, to be honest. But indies are always a go-to for us, and you can't judge a year's performance by just AAA exclusives alone. Indie games obviously don't get as much love as the biggins, but they are our jam, so we just wanted to squeeze that in there. Indies, man. Dude, indies. There's been so many this year as well. Mm -hmm. Rogan, Potion Permit, Baron Breakfast, Lumberjack. The list goes on. Okay, so now let's talk about what we didn't get. 
We did bring up delays already, but there has been so many of them this year that we thought they deserved their own little section in this video. And look, we get it. Delays do really suck. These people and these companies get us so hyped up for so long about a specific time only to let us down in the last quarter. What happened to release dates being actual release dates? You've almost got to take them with a grain of salt these days. Like, is it actually coming out then? I don't know. Probably not, apparently. <laughs> I've been burnt one too many times now. So look, we don't want to just take a huge stinky poop all over Microsoft for this whole video, but two of the most prolific delays did come from them this year. So I have already mentioned them before, but Bethesda's sci-fi Skyrim RPG Starfield and Arcane Studios' vampire shooter Redfall. These were two of this year's most hyped games full stop, and Starfield especially has been sought after for years. Honestly, Microsoft is just taking a big stinky poop all over themselves at this point. And you know what the worst part about these two particular delays is? They don't even have a solid release date still. Granted, Redfall never did have a solid one, but Starfield's initial date of like November 11th or something kind of seems like wishful thinking in hindsight. Delays have affected every system this year, not just Xbox. The PS5 exclusive for Spoken, which we are personally really excited for, was also pushed back into 2023, but we do know that the hype isn't anywhere near the level of that of Starfield. Also, a huge array of third-party multi-console releases were delayed too. A quick Google search shows that there are way too many to list here, but we will bring up just a few that we are personally really excited to get our hands on next year. Hogwarts Legacy is the big one that we are super pumped for, but also Suicide Squad, Marvel's Midnight Suns, that Avatar RPG we heard about last day 3 Gollum, but that's only because we're both Lord of the Ring fans and, you know, New Zealand, like, Laura's a Kiwi. And then there's that indie title, Sea of Stars. Ooh, that thing looks awesome. And it also proves that even indie titles aren't immune from the dreaded delay. Okay, it's time for the elephant in the room. We are predominantly a Nintendo channel and we do love them, but they are not immune to our criticism. Tears of the Kingdom. What do I even say? <laughs> it might just be my most hyped game of all time. So were we disappointed? Yes. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this game more than I'm looking forward to Tom proposing after seven long, grueling years. <laughs> Delays suck, but we do just want to counter with this. If it means a game will be the best it possibly can be, if it means that there will be no day one patch, then we are all for it. Take as much time as you want. More importantly though, if it means that the real human beings behind these games get to work regular hours with zero crunch culture, then by all means, Delay that thing for like 10 years if you need to. No one is worth impressing if it comes at the cost of your free time and your families. So has 2022 sucked for gaming? It really depends who you are and what you have access to. If all you have is an Xbox, then yes. <laughs> yes it has and we would definitely understand how you would be upset about that. But if you're like us and you main Switch, then no way! We've been eating so good this year. And if you've got a PlayStation, then it wasn't the worst. It wasn't the best, but it wasn't the worst. Kind of mid. Hmm. Overall though, as an industry as a whole, no, we don't think this year has sucked for gaming, especially after COVID and everything's finally starting to look like it was pre 2020. And we definitely can't complain about that. But this was as much as some kind of gaming video as it was a question to you guys. Did 2022 suck for gaming for you personally? If it did, then let us know why. What are you disappointed about? And if it didn't suck for you, also tell us why. <laughs> what did you enjoy? What did you think was awesome about this year? Let us know in the comments below because we really do enjoy interacting with you after these videos are done. And don't forget that the year's not even over yet. We've still got heaps of reviews and heaps of end of year content for you guys. So enjoy the rest of your week and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Like one of those boxing ladies who are like round one. <laughs>
Ja, det var det. Åh!